So welcome to my top 10 Sega Master System games of all time. I'm gonna bring it out here, folks. I'm bringing it out. I love the Sega Master System. It's one of the systems I grew up with. Obviously, there was the Nintendo Entertainment System, and then there was this by Sega. And we know that Nintendo won, but for all of us back then that had this machine, we absolutely adored it. We thought it was amazing, and it is amazing. I played some incredible games, and I'm gonna share 10 of them today, 10 of my favorite games of all time on the machine. Now, I just wanna say, everybody out there knows my number one pick. They already know that, but I wanna say this, I'm gonna show you something a little different today with the number one pick. And uh, no spoilers for anybody who doesn't know that pick. Most of you who've been watching the channel for years know it. So anyways, let's get on to number 10, shall we? Number 10, it had to make the list. This is a game that when I was a younger guy, I cried when I first played it. It was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen in my life. The graphics, the gameplay, Dynamite Ducks. No, no, it's not Dynamite Ducks. I hate this game with a passion. I had to bring it into the list in the sense that I just want to say goodbye. Hate that game. Oh, don't hope I didn't kill anybody over there. It's, it's fine though. I had to mention Dynamite Ducks. Hate that game. So that's my most hated game on the machine. But let's get into the real number 10 here. It was an arcade game. I never played the arcade game. I only played the conversion uh, to the Sega Master System. I played it over at my friend Richard's place. Back in the day, he's the guy who introduced me to the Master System. And I went over and he had a ton load of games and I was just like, wow, look at these graphics, it's amazing. Alien Syndrome. Yes, this is a really fun game and people will be out there, a lot of you will be saying, really? You picked Alien Syndrome to be in the list? When you first played this game, it was so cool because you're playing as a Ripley style character from the movie Alien and you're running around like a space station killing aliens. Like, look at that. That's an alien. It, it is an alien. And you get flamethrowers and all these different weapons and it's very repetitive, but it's a, a product of the time. And this was so cool back then. It really was awesome. And I remember playing this at my friend Richard's place and going, this is so cool, you get to kill aliens. And I was a big alien and aliens fan. So it made sense for me that this would be there. Okay, this is a really cool game. And there's been quite a few games based with this character. Not anymore, Sega's forgotten all about the character, unfortunately. This was one of the mascots for Sega before Sonic. And a lot of you will know, Alex Kidd. And this is High Tech World. This is kind of a side view action adventure style of game where you're running around a mansion and you're solving clues and you're getting different items and freaking your way through the mansion. And it was weird because Alex Kidd started as an action game and this kind of wasn't. This is kind of an exploration game and I really applauded its choice. I remember I used to go to this place, Save On Foods, and they used to have this little glass kiosk. And that's where they had all the Master System games. And I would always look at the back of this and say, what, what is this? It's in a, a mansion and you going upstairs and finding items. I, I liked the adventure of it. And I finally got the game years later and I played it and I really thought it was something kind of cool. And I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like this. They, they like the original Alex Kidd and you know, when he goes into Shinobi World and all those kinds of adventures that you went on with Alex Kidd. But for, for me, this is definitely one that's memorable, definitely one that's nostalgic and one that has some pretty cool graphics and adventure elements in it going on. Now at number eight, we have a really big game. It was a big game in Japan it kind of has been notable over here. People have discovered it, but it didn't have the same impact as it did in arcades back in Japan back in the day. And that is Fantasy Zone. Fantasy Zone with our little character, Opa Opa. Opa Opa was another semi mascot for Sega. A little side view, uh, alien uh, robot type of creature. It's debatable what Opa Opa is, uh, but you're going around side view levels, you're destroying little boss ships throughout the level, then you fight a master boss at the end. And what's, what was really cool about this was you collected money throughout the level and you could use that money to upgrade your Opa Opa. And so you could get better weapons, you could get lasers or boosters. And I think that was kind of a brand new thing 
to the shooter, to the side view shooter genre at the time. And it was also such beautiful pastel graphics. And it was one of the ones that I saw in the Master System that really had an impact on me. I played this one down the road at uh, my friend the Kato's place back in the day. And I was like, oh my god, I, I just love Fantasy Zone. And I thought this was really, really cool. Now, this next game, I don't own a physical copy for because by the time I got to play it, the prices were extraordinarily high for it. But it definitely deserves a place in here. I played it on emulator. That was the only place I could find it uh, back in the day to try it out because I had to try this out. And that is Golden Axe Warrior. What is that? Is it a Golden Axe game? Is it a side view action game? No. It's basically a Zelda style of ripoff game. And it really is. It's an overhead action RPG that really takes a lot from Zelda. It does a few things on its own. It's kind of average in a lot of respects. But I applaud the choice for having a Zelda-style game on the Master System. And I th I think the reason why I never played this game, I never saw this, ever. I never saw this in stores for sale or anything like that. Because I would have rented it, I would have tried it out back then because I was such a fanatical fan. And so I, I only could play it years later and I thought it was really kind of a cool game. I already like Golden Axe, uh, the game, the arcade game. And we had some of the boss characters from that game back. And it was just kind of neat to revisit Golden Axe as a Zelda style adventure. Now this is another game that is kind of a Zelda style adventure game, an overhead action game. And it's one that I absolutely adore. I'm wearing the t-shirt and I, I'm always so happy when I can go to my closet and pull out my Govelius t-shirt. I'm like, today is gonna be a good day uh, because I'm revisiting the past, getting that nostalgic, uh, you know, glasses on and looking at a game that I absolutely adored back then. And as I said, I, I discovered the Master System at my friend Richard's place. And we went up to that Save On Foods with that kiosk. And we were like, okay, let's rent a game. And he didn't know anything about games to rent. He's like, I don't know. And I'm like, we have to rent Govelius. I, I saw the cover. And I saw the cover and it just was like, wow. And it said action. But then I flipped it on the back. I'm like, wait, it's got some action RPG elements. I'm like, this is like Zelda. This is like Zelda. We have to rent this. And I... It was kind of cool that I really like Zelda on the NES, but playing Govelius on a Master System was its own unique experience. I think it was the music, the graphics at the time, the characters, there was Randar, there was the fairies, there was the old woman that would sell you Bibles. It was weird and it had side view action uh, levels and then it had its overworld levels which were overhead and you would destroy a bunch of uh, creatures on the screen and they would open up little holes and you could go down the holes and you could discover dungeons or characters and I thought it was magical and I still think this game is a magical game and a very underappreciated game. I, I really like Govelis quite a lot. I, I like that main character Khaleesi's. I mean I still remember all of it. And for anybody out there, I pulled this out as well. This is the Mark III version. So in Japan, the Sega Master System was called the Mark III. And here's what Gobelius looked like on that machine. I just thought, for anybody out there who's kind of nostalgic about the game, who's never seen the Japanese game, you might get a, a little bit of a kick out of that, for sure. I love Gobelius. Had to be in the top 10 list. At number five is a game that I thought was forgotten for many years. And then in the last couple of years, it's had a major re revitalization in the video game spectrum. And a lot of new people are playing it. And a lot of new players are playing the reskinned version of this game. And I couldn't be more happier. I remember when this was announced, I'm like, what? They're bringing this game back? Because I originally played it on the Sega Master System down in my friend Kato's uh, place and I, it was awesome. I remember my friend had the Sega Genesis and he had the power base converter and he was playing this game. And that was Wonder Boy 3, The Dragon's Trap and it is signed by the creator. I'm very lucky to have that. What is this game? I, I'm a huge Wonder Boy fan. I really liked Wonder Boy Monster Land and then this was more of the same but in a different way. It was side view action where you could change into different creatures that would open up different places on the map. I hate using the term cat, you know, like a Metroidvania style game because this game was right there in the beginning of all of that and I I loved all the different creatures you would change into. I love the beautiful graphics that not enough people talk about how great the, the graphics were on the Master System and you know this isn't a battle between the NES and the Master System but I always preferred 
the Master System graphics. I just liked the colors. I liked, I don't know, there was just something about it. I even liked the sound chip a lot more. Very nostalgic about that, but this is a, a wondrous game, and I'm so happy. If you guys haven't played it, it's available on nearly every system now. You can try it out and, and try out the, the brand new version of it. To be honest, I prefer the original. I do prefer the original. I like the look of it all. Now, at number four, this had to be there. This is a great game. One, again, from my nostalgic past, from a wonderful time in my life. Again, being at my friend Richard's place, him and his brother own this game. And they were phenomenal at the game. They were really, really good. They knew every single secret. They knew how to get all the money in the game. They knew exactly where to jump. I sat there, and I've had so many memories about just sitting in people's basements, watching them play video games, and marveling at the games. Because I either didn't have the machine, or I didn't have the game. This is one of those games, and I was so jealous. I was like, oh my god, I wish I had this at home so I could play this as well, because it's so great. Wonder Boy and Monster Land. I just mentioned it with Wonder, Wonder Boy 3, the, the Dragon's Trap. Uh, this is such an awesome game. And we have to remember where Wonder Boy started from. It was a side view action game. That was it. Where all of a sudden it became the side view action RPG. And I couldn't be happier with that. And I gotta say, look at this cover. It's, ab it's just terrible. It's terrible. It's Look at that. The main character looks like me back in the day when I didn't get a haircut. I swear to God, I... <laughs> the Master System was not known for the best artwork, we can say that, but it was known for some really good side view action RPGs. This is definitely one of them, and I had to mention it today. We are in the top three now. We're into the top three, and you know me, there's gonna be some RPGs in here. There's gonna be some RPGs. This game, realistically, I didn't know it when I first played it, was gonna change my life. It was gonna become one of those games. I had no idea. Uh, my friends, uh, the Kato's, went away for the summer. They came back with all these RPGs and all the nerdy kids in the neighborhood assembled. And we all sat there and marveled at these RPGs because we were playing tabletop RPGs. There was nothing like this at the time. I can't say that enough. There wasn't the abundance of RPGs that we have nowadays. So to see these on the screen was like, Whoa, like I, I couldn't believe it. And this is an action RPG uh, of the ones they brought back. And as I say, it changed my life. I didn't know that it would. This game, Wise, no, it's Ease. That has always been the joke. We always called it Wise back then. Look at that. I thought it was Wise. And I thought it was a play on the term like Wise books, being wise. That's kind of what I thought, but no. We find out later on that it's ease and we were wrong our entire childhoods, but that is okay. And I sat and I watched my friends play this game over and over again and I thought it was so incredible. I thought it was kind of like Zelda, but they were doing something different. You kind of ran into enemies and killed them that way. You didn't really pull out a sword per se. Uh, it was a kind of a strange structure to the land. And, it, and it's only Easebooks 1. That has to be said, it's only Easebooks 1 in here. So it's really strange, you're kind of in the land of Hysteria and then you go up Darm Tower and you defeat Dark Fact and that's the story. That's how this game ends and you're like, oh, and let me say there's some bits in this game that are so challenging. I I don't know how my friends ever figured it out. I had to go and ask them. Well, especially in Darm Tower. I mean, there's, there's things where you have to break uh, certain pillars and you're like, how the hell did you even know to do that in so many different levels with the same, so many different pillars? How did you know to check that pillar? We had a lot of time on our hands back then, but uh, they gave me the answer to that, thank God. I love this game, and little did I know, as I said, it changed my life. I didn't know this was going to be the beginning of a certain obsession about a series called Ease. I had no idea that all these years later, nearly 30 years later, I'd be talking about this series, and that it is a series. And uh, obviously, on the Turbo Graphics, there was Easebooks 1 and 2, which was the, kind of the first game of this, and the second game combined with uh, updated visuals and graphics, and that's when my real obsession began. But little did I know when I played this game, how much in the future I'd play all the rest of them and love the entire series and be preaching about it for so many years. It's really bittersweet. It's a beautiful kind of memory there to think back on. We're at number two, and number two, this is a great one. This is a great one. Again, it was one of the RPGs my friends brought back from Bellingham. And one that all the rest of the crew kind of like passed on. Where my friend was playing it all the time. And I was looking over his shoulder and I was like, this is magical. 
This is so magical. I liked. The, I, do you know what? I was away on vacation. I was still listening to this music on my MP3 player. I was like, oh man, it was just taking me back and taking me back to Miracle Warriors. What a wonderful RPG. And is it dated? Yes. Is it a product of the time? Absolutely. Was it amazing at the time? Absolutely. I love the character designs, the, sorry, like the monster designs in the levels. I just thought they were so imaginative. They had such ridiculous names. These monsters had the weirdest names and they were so long and I'd be like, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. But I liked the adventure of it. I liked the fantasy of it. I liked that I got to play another semi- uh, you know, anime style RPG, I was blown away. Like, you don't understand. This was a huge deal then. I can't say that enough. It was a huge deal, and I really like this. I love getting all the way to Tehran and defeating her at the end, and you kind of have to figure out how to get there, and the clues in this game that they give you. It's, it's a real good adventure, and I know it's, for somebody to go and play it now, it's a little bit dated, but it was a very important game at the time, and arguably... One of the very first console RPGs of all time, really. One of the good ones, anyways. And for anybody who wants to see the Mark III version of this is right here. And there's the end boss uh, right there on the cover. And it comes with, this is neat, it comes with a little metal figurine. So you can put it on the map to know where you're at. This is before auto-mapping in games, I swear. And look at that. There's a, you know, a picture of the Mark III there. And some of the encounters and things in the game. And, Pure imagination, and it just captured my imagination at the time, as I say. Okay, we have arrived at number one. At number one, as most of you know, you know what my number one choice is. But I'm going to do something kind of amazing through the power of editing and 80s nostalgia. I'm going to click my fingers and show you something that you haven't seen with my Fancy Star memories before. Yes, I wanted to show this. This is a very important piece of my Sega Master System memories and my Fantasy Star memories, and Fantasy Star is my favorite game of all time. I saw it playing 30 years ago on this beautiful Commodore monitor at my friend's place down the road. This monitor is fantastic. I can't believe it still works. Watch this. We'll turn this on right here. Beautiful sound. Beautiful sound. And a beautiful game, for sure. I want to say, sitting right here close to the monitor, it looks really good. On the screen right now, it looks very washed out, but believe me, the picture was like nothing you'd ever seen before. This was state of the art in 1988. Uh, isn't it amazing though, as I just said, it still works 30 years later. You can say whatever you want about old tech, at least it still turns on, that is for sure. But Fantasy Star, I've talked about so much. I don't need to. I can just end with this moment. It's the best RPG on the machine. It's a game that changed my life. A game that made me become a, a video game player for all of eternity and beyond. And one that I still am talking about 30 years later. And who knows, I'll still probably be talking about it in another 30 years. So anyways, guys, until next time.